In this problem, there's three scenarios, and we are asked to determine the angular velocity given that all of these three problems have the same angular momentum about 0, 0.0, and this angular momentum is 0 0.1 kilogram meter squared per second. So we're going to start with each case and work our way through case 1, 2, and 3, and determine the angular velocity omega 1, omega 2, and omega 3 respectively. Let's start with our coordinate system. x points to the right, y points, points upwards, and a positive rotation is defined as counterclockwise. So let's start with scenario one. In this case, we have a disc that has a radius of 45 centimeters and a mass of 600 grams. It is rotating with an omega that is clockwise, so it's going to be in the negative k hat direction. And we're given that we have our angular momentum about O being equal to 0 0.1 kilogram meter square per second. So for case one, we define the angular momentum as H naught comma one. So this is H O, so this is H about O with the case, case number one. So this is going to be equal to I naught and omega one, right? So this um, I naught, sorry, this should be one. I naught one is I about O in the first case and omega 1 is the angular velocity of the first case. So again, all these letters, uh, these numbers here, this is essentially denoting case 1. So in this case, this is going to be equal to 0 0.1 kilograms meters squared per second. Now it's important to note that I've made this into a scalar equation, but the real equation would be that h, vector h, is equal to um, i omega. So the unit vector of omega is going to be the same unit vector as h. And this will come in later when we define omega as a unit vector. So we are given this, we need to determine omega. So since we're given the right side of the equation and we need to find omega, we need to define this i naught comma one, i o comma one. So what is i o comma one? That is uh, the inertia about this point O at the bottom here. So for a thin disk, we know that this is going to be equal to one half m r squared plus m one r squared. So this is essentially using parallel axis. We know that a rotating disk about its center um, is one half m r squared. And then if we move a distance of one radius downwards, so m l squared, where l is r, we get the uh, inertia about point O. So note again, this m1 is essentially the mass in the first case. So that would be the 600 grams. So we plug this in and we isolate for omega and we get the following equation. Omega one is equal to 0 0.1 kilograms meter squared per second divided by one half times 0 0.6 kilograms times 0 0.45 meters squared plus 0 0.6 kilograms times 0 0.45 meters squared. And we can finalize our answer to omega one being equal to 0 0.55 radians per second. So to get a vectorial form, and look at the diagram, omega one, the vector of omega one is rotating in the clockwise direction, which means it's in the negative k hat direction. It's negative 0 0.55 radians per second in the k hat direction. 
And this is our final answer for omega 1. Okay, now we're going to move on to the second case. So in the second case, instead of having a disc that's rota rotating, we have a bar that's rotating, and this is pinned at one end, and it's rotating with uh, omega 2. The center of gravity is located halfway down the bar. So for case 2, we have that H naught 2 is equal to I zero I naught two omega two. And this is going to be equal to zero point one kilograms meter squared per second. Same thing as before. And we can find I naught two. So I naught two is going to be equal to so we know that this is a bar that is pinned about the end. So we need to find the moment, uh, the inertia about this point, um, and that is just one third ml squared. So that's going to be equal to one third m two l squared, where this l over here is big L, right? The length of the beam, and that is ninety centimeters. So we plug everything in. And we get that omega 2 is equal to 0 0.1 kilograms meter squared per second divided by 1 third 0 0.35 kilograms times 0 0.9 meters all squared. And we get that omega 2 is equal to 1.06 radians per second and the vectorial form omega 2 is equal to if we look at this diagram this is turning again in the clockwise direction uh, so this will be a again negative k hat direction negative 1.06 radians per second in the k hat direction and this is our second case. This is the answer for our second case. Lastly, let's look at the last case. So the last case, it's again a bar that's of distance d, but with it's pinned at O, which is a point that is um, a quarter of the length away from the center of gravity, right? And uh, this um, and we have omega-3 in this case um, as the angular velocity. So we need to again look at case number three and h o three is equal to i o three omega three. This is equal again to 0 0.1 kilograms meters squared per second because we always have the same angular momentum, right? Now, let's find I03, and this is, again, for a bar. So for the bar, we have 1 12th ml squared, um, plus we use parallel axis to move um, by a distance of d over 4 to get to this point over here. So we have it being... 1 12th m3 l squared in this case l is d plus parallel axis m3 times d over 4 because we're just moving by a quarter um, and then that's squared so if we plug this in we get that omega 3 is equal to 0 0.1 kilograms meter squared per second divided by 1 12th times 0 0.63 kilograms times 0 0.67 meters all squared plus 0 0.63 kilograms times 0 0.67 divided by 
for all squared, close bracket. And once we plug in these values into our calculator, we see that omega-3 is equal to 2.42 radians per second. And if we look at the Victorial equation, omega-3 is equal to, in this case, we are rotating counterclockwise. Uh, so this is going to be a positive k-hat direction. In this case, it's going to be 2.42 radians per second in the k-hat direction. And this is the final answer for our last um, scenario. Now, comparing these, um, we can see that um, comparing specifically these two cases, if you have the same angular momentum, but you move this pin closer towards the center, you will end up with a larger angular velocity. And this direction doesn't really matter, um, positive or negative, because that's how we just set it up in the question with just arrows. Um, but because in this question we're assuming that the magnitude of the angular momentum is constant and not the direction. But uh, we can see that the closer we move this pin to G, so the center of gravity, um, the larger the angular velocity because um, all we're changing in this problem is I, right? Inertia. Um, so as you move closer, this inertia will get smaller, so then your angular velocity will get larger to compensate and maintain this angular momentum constant.